Amen. Amen. It's so uh, great to be with everybody again this Sunday. And uh, thank you, uh, Marie, for that uh, leadership in our uh, worship time. Uh, great selection of songs, as always. Uh, definitely the uh, talking about God's greatness uh, fits in with the Bible text that God has given us for today. And talking about uh, this is our Father's world that, that shows his glory, shows his uh, amazing, powerful presence in our lives. And while we, we know, we walk in uh, faith that there is a better world yet to come, uh, we can still uh, celebrate the goodness of God and his grace in uh, daily living, uh, being grateful to wake up in the morning and to have opportunities to, uh, to enjoy his world, to share his world, uh, to live in his grace. So thank you again. Uh, Vicki and I are uh, right here and, and uh, enjoying this uh, participation in worship together. Now we're uh, doing something a little different with the PowerPoint uh, this Sunday. So uh, uh, in part because in this Bible text of Isaiah 60, one through three, so much really depends on how the text is written. And uh, so I'm glad to uh, help give all of our attention to the Bible text. And uh, during question and answer time, we'll, uh, uh, you'll be able to see my face and we interact uh, perhaps more personally. This uh, Bible text kept coming in my mind, this Isaiah 60, the whole chapter, but especially one through three, as we've really had kind of a dark time, uh, a, a kind of discouraging, uh, bleak time so much of this year. Started out with the idea of 2020, meaning 2020 vision, 2020 you know, success, clarity, um, drawing from the symbolic meaning of 2020. But uh, early on, the pandemic hit, uh, the economy was shut down, uh, and the political season has, has been kind of uh, depressing as well in many ways. So, uh, and, and all of us have had our own crises coping with the economic challenges and the medical challenges and keeping social distance, which is not our nature. We, we love being close together. Wearing a mask, for heaven's sakes, uh, when even if it's not Halloween or, or just having a, a fun uh, masquerade party, uh, all this has been sources of distress and, and uh, sometimes discouragement. So this uh, amazing text that starts off saying, arise and shine, for your light has come, helps us to uh, give attention to God's grace and, and the appointment that God gives us, giving us light. We, if we ask people, uh, who's the light of the world? Uh, most uh, Christians will say Jesus, and they're all absolutely right. But Jesus said, you are the light of the world because Jesus has given his light into our lives by, by his amazing grace. And so this text is, is pointing out that, that our light has come, that we can draw from God's light and, and be a light ourselves. So uh, you may want to read along with me out loud if you'd like uh, these three verses that begin Isaiah 60. Arise, shine. Arise. For your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the people. But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Ethnicities will come to your light, and leaders to the brightness of your dawn. Very optimistic very upbeat, very grace-filled, three verses uh, out of the Bible. Let's look at uh, slide three. There's a subtle pattern here that uh, kind of jumped off the page in my recent uh, reading as, as I was praying for uh, what's uh, a, a beautiful text to give, to be an encouragement to uh, brothers and sisters of Emmanuel 
uh, here on the 27th of September. And the more I read it and kind of reread it, it stuck in my mind because there is a, what's called a chiastic pattern. There's, there's the first and last topic in this uh, poem um, is very similar, to be shining, to uh, let our light show uh, to others. And uh, of course, to be renewed in, in light in our relationship with God. And then the second topic and second from last topic deal with the source, the glory of the Lord as our source, God's own living presence as our source. Um, and the being covered uh, uh, all over with, the, with God's glory and all the meanings of that uh, word glory that we'll uh, look at in just a couple minutes. And at the very middle, a, a description, uh, a double description of the challenge uh, surrounding us. So it's, it, it kind of, it's like a mountain, so to speak. Um, the first and last are the same you know, going upwards to the uh, second and second to the last, the same. And at the center, uh, a double statement. Um, so th the reason that uh, uh, chiasms are so valuable is they really help to memorize. If you were memorizing these three verses, if you saw the pattern, it would help you remember what's going on in this uh, amazing Bible text. And it also is great for meditation. We can kind of take a huge, wonderful step into meditating on God, meditating on his presence, really uh, focusing on his forgiveness and his grace as we start off uh, uh, reminding ourselves what the Bible says, our light has come. And, and we are in the light uh, uh, through grace. And, and then, you know, on to the topic of uh, God's own presence, his glory rising upon us. And then the issues of the day. You know, we uh, wake up sometimes, maybe all of us wake up in the morning and whether it's the first thought or within just minutes, we think of uh, problems around us. Uh, just reading the newspaper, we pick up um, that may be at, at the front of our our home or uh, wherever we uh, or turn the TV or radio on. The, uh, the emphasis is so often these days, especially on discouraging uh, news, kind of uh, depressing updates on a variety of, of topics. So um, we're ready for that. And when we're in the Lord's presence, he's certainly not unfamiliar with all this and much more, but we can meditate on on uh, issues of the lack of God's light in our world, in in the public sphere and uh, personal issues, and to uh, recognize especially people are are in darkness. But then to to reframe and recognize that our source is the Lord. The preparation is God's own presence rising upon us, uh, covering us, and his glory uh, appearing over us. And the assignment, again, to share the light to all ethnicities and to all leaders. So the meditation process can kind of go through the structure of this amazing poem. And uh, another way to appreciate this structure is to recognize our focus is probably right away on the first point, uh, the assignment. You know, here's an instruction, here's a command. Rise and shine for your light has come. Uh, uh, really a, a command that uh, directs us to, to act. You know, not just to receive the light, which is huge gift from, from God, but to also be the light. You, you could think of even the moon as a parable the uh, moon has no source of energy or light itself, but is faithful every night, shining a huge portion of the light directly from the sun, shining on uh, different parts of the earth. And uh, so our light is from God, 
we give God uh, glory and uh, recognize him as the source. And at the same time, you know, we, uh, we embrace this assignment to, to be light ourselves. So that the focus in, a, in this kind of a poem is first and last verse, maybe especially. And then our eye kind of goes in this kind of a poem to the middle. You know, what's the turning point? What's the, the, the peak of the, of the uh, focus? What's the peak of the attention that the author, Isaiah, and guided by the Holy Spirit, wants us to attend to? And that, that uh, peak of, of uh, focus is still to be honest about the darkness. Darkness covers the earth. There's a reason that um, we should rise and shine because darkness covers the earth. We have an opportunity to bring light into darkness and light always overrules darkness. Uh, it, it's, uh, the darkness can't snuff out light, but light is uh, amazing in its effect in a dark place and especially darkness covering people. Uh, we have this uh, focus of attention to meet the challenge, to uh, play our role as God's light, as the, the light, as God's image, to represent God in whatever uh, places of, of a lack of light that we come to, to be that light as God directs with his discernment and his, his love and compassion for others. And of course, the, the intermediate point of preparation, how do we, how are we renewed? How do we keep our own tank full to be successful at shining, at even rising and shining? Um, it's uh, receiving glory from the Lord and, and letting that glory cover us, uh, you know, letting the Lord's presence rise upon us. Isn't that an amazing image? and his glory appearing over you. So the, the structure of this poem, uh, in addition, of course, to the literal words, but the structure of the poem helps magnify the message of the poem. Now let's look at slide four. Now you may have noted uh, that in this, these brief three verses, uh, you are mentioned six times. That's not a mistake. In, in my experience as a, a student uh, in, in public school years ago, in, you know, in, in the early grades and even in high school, if you use one word too often, the teacher, the writing teacher, the English teacher might put a big red circle around uh, some of those uh, repeated uses like, you know, find another word, use a synonym. Uh, it it's, looks like you're stuck on a word. But the Holy Spirit has a license <laughs> to emphasize that amazing word, you, uh, because this message is for us and we need to get the message. It's addressed to us. We need to receive that uh, personal message. So, you know, rise, shine, for your light has come. Not just light for other people, but, but let's take that very personally in a, in a new way. Maybe you already have, but in a new way to recognize that the Lord really wants all of us to be light and he's, by his grace, poured light into us and, and we can reflect his light in any situation. And the glory of the Lord rises upon you, you know, not some other person, not just a very super special, uh, devoted uh, uh, saints or whatever we might think of the glory of the Lord, but the glory of the Lord rises upon you to receive that grace. And then again, but the Lord rises upon you in spite of the darkness surrounding us. And his glory appears over you. Ethnicities will come to your light. It's your light as you receive it from God. The light that transforms you and me. And therefore we have this amazing 
uh, gift to be able to share that light with others for their uh, salvation, for their uh, liberation and uh, transformation. So uh, leaders will be uh, brought to and, and drawn to the brightness of your dawn. And notice it's your dawn. It's not like your midday or whatever, but, but uh, think of, uh, even though you may have been walking with the Lord a long time, I mean, even though you've had many opportunities to share his light, think of this moment also as a dawn, as still only the beginning, that the huge opportunities, the huge um, need to share his light um, has only begun, and uh, you're, you're not going to run out of opportunities to share his light. It's still the dawn. And as you receive his light again today, and again tomorrow morning, uh, as, you, as you pray at the beginning of the day, or, or whatever point of the day you spend a uh, special time in, in prayer, or Bible reading, uh, to let that light keep you fresh. Uh, like the dawn. So let's look at uh, slide number five. So we're going to look at just one line at a time here to, to uh, understand the uh, some of the full uh, significance of these amazing words out of Isaiah 60. Arise, shine, for your light has come. You can say those words with me. Arise, Shine, for your light has come. And again, remember the emphasis on your light. Uh, Jesus said, uh, you are the light of the world. He said to, to his followers, which we're part of. Uh, those words uh, apply to us. And then right away he said, now don't hide your light under a, a, a bushel basket or under a bowl, uh, but let it shine. In wherever you are, uh, let your light shine. And uh, some beautiful uh, children's songs are based on that Bible text in uh, Matthew 5, 15. And um, they apply it to adults just as much, if not more, than to children. Your light and has come. Not something you have to do to earn the light. Uh, you're, you're, it's not something that, 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 that depends on... Uh, 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 good works or uh, you know, just being lucky or whatever, uh, but your light has come. So grow in that light and be ready to share. Now verse, uh, now um, slide number six. And I, uh, we, you know, probably none of us remember that many different days in class, the classes that we may have taken uh, a few years ago, or even in my case, uh, uh, some decades ago. But I vividly remember when I was reviewing this text to share with you, I vividly remembered sitting down in the library at uh, the seminary I attended uh, because my assignment was to translate Isaiah 60. And when I was, and I thought, hey, let's kind of just quietly uh, read it out loud in the Hebrew. And the Hebrew can be very uh, beautiful. Um, so the, the poetry in English, some of the poetry in English is just uh, not the same as in Hebrew. There's the, in the original text, there's a beauty of the language that is um, perhaps impossible to duplicate in any language. But the first two words I remember vividly, and I checked it out, and I was, my memory served me well. Kumi ori. Kumi means arise. Ori means shine. Both of them as commands. Both of them as, um, yeah, commands of the Lord. Uh, beautiful commands of the Lord. Attractive commands of the Lord, of course. Rise and shine. Kumi. Ori. And why don't you say those with me too? Kumi Ori. I don't know if you've ever had a Hebrew class, but uh, at least now you can speak a, a couple more words in Hebrew. We, of course, know a lot of other Hebrew words like hallelujah, 
means, you know, praise the Lord in Hebrew. Uh, Yahweh or Jehovah uh, is the name of God. So you know quite a few uh, Hebrew words probably, and, uh, uh, and maybe a lot of Hebrew words. But here are two more to add. Kumi, Ari, arise and shine. Let's look at slide seven. And the glory of the Lord rises upon you on slide seven. Now, this is our preparation, the glory of the Lord. And I think one of the words that is often, very often misunderstood in the Bible is the word glory. We think, I think, um, especially about the Shekinah glory, the bright light of God's presence, uh, Shekinah glory of the, uh, you know, the, the glowing uh, uh, cloud guiding the people of Israel through the wilderness or the fire, the pillar of fire as the Shekinah glory. Um, or, you know, earlier, the, the little bush that was full of flames but not being burned up. Uh, that where God spoke to Moses there on uh, at Mount Sinai uh, weeks before he was uh, able to bring the people of Israel to uh, to meet God and to hear God give the wonderful Ten Commandments. But uh, so we we sometimes think of that as a, a, a shining glory, a halo type uh, uh, phenomenon, but literally. Very literally, the word glory means reputation, the reputation of God uh, and the power of uh, his excellence, you know, to really be drawn. If someone is excellent at what they do, we're drawn to them. There's a, a glory of uh, a being of virtuosity is a great word, too. It's a synonym of glory. God's excellence in, in so many things. He is the best. He is the Lord of all. He is the one who's the creator. So he surely understands us, understands his many universes. Uh, we're, we're dealing with the, the Lord of all power, all love, all knowledge. So virtuosity uh, fits. A wisdom, wisdom of God is part of the meaning of glory. God's influence, and a word that maybe isn't used very often, gravitas, the, the importance of God, his uh, significance that when, when he, as he is part of our lives and part of events, um, things happen uh, because, you know, God's presence is redemptive, is restorative, is, is giving hope. We sang about God's glory when we talked about his greatness uh, in the wonderful worship time that uh, Marie led us in. So glory has to do with uh, just the character of God. Again, his excellence, his wisdom, his influence, his uh, virtuosity, his uh, perfections that draw us to himself, not a put off, in any sense, but draw us to God's presence, are excited to be in God's presence. Um, and that's why it's very significant to talk about sin in Romans chapter 3, to have the most vivid statement about what sin does, what its effects are. Uh, Paul writes in Romans 3.23, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We, we don't cut it. We don't meet the mark of, of God's own excellence, God's own uh, standards, and we fall short of the glory of God. Therefore, need God's glory covering us and, and being an uh, inspiration for us to be the best, that he's created us to be and the best that he's uh, uh, saved us to be, redeemed us to be. So the glory of the Lord rises 
upon you. Very, very strong words. Now, the reason that it affects who we are is that we're already God's image. We're already God's children. And when, when uh, uh, the glory of the Lord rises upon us, we are uh, already built to reflect that, to, to really uh, be examples, to be representatives of God's glory, because we are created as his image, created as his uh, children, uh, to, created to represent him. You know, one of the nicest uh, compliments uh, a parent can hear is when someone says about a newborn a child or um, uh, a grown uh, child, uh, you know, she has your eyes or uh, she has your nice smile or, you know, he has that uh, compassion for, for people that, that you have, you know, where, where, we, where people notice uh, that our children uh, have some of our uh, good characteristics or uh, people may have a set of you that, that you represent your uh, you know, mother or father in a special way because of uh, an excellence, because of a uh, expression of love and uh, your, your quickness to try to bring uh, help to people, your responsiveness to, to people's uh, anxiety or issues. So, uh, and in some sense, even more so with God, we, we want to represent God, we're able to, we're actually designed, part of our definition as human beings is to represent God. And when his glory rises upon us, we're all the more able to. Wouldn't, wouldn't it be a nice compliment, huge compliment for, for you or me to say to someone, uh, you resemble our heavenly father with your deep wisdom or you resemble our Heavenly Father with the compassion that you show to people that are, are suffering or who have been uh, hurt in some way. And you know, all the other different ways that we can represent God. And whether they say it or not, the point is we ought to be the kind of people that live out within our lives, within our opportunities, within opportunities that we even help create to live out uh, the character of God and, and his glory. Very powerful uh, Bible text uh, in 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Paul talks about the, um, the amazing glory of the Lord uh, that was shown in Moses' face uh, when he came from a meeting with the Lord and then told the folks, told the people of Israel, what God's answer to their question was, or what God's direction was for their lives. And in the Bible text says in, in uh, Exodus uh, 34 and a couple other passages that, that then Moses put a mask on. Sometimes it's translated veil, but it, it, was, a, it was not see-through. It was a, a mask that would hide his face. And it's not clear why, but, but he, the mask was off when he met with God, stayed off when he spoke to the people of Israel. Uh, but then until he met with God again, he wore this mask. And, and Paul interprets that in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 3, the last half of the chapter. Very profound. I encourage you to take a look. But uh, God, uh, but uh, St. Paul, Apostle Paul, interprets that, that, it hid the fact that the glory faded, that uh, uh, soon the, that Shekinah glow on, on Moses' face was gone, and uh, Moses was just uh, looked like a normal human being, and uh, uh, people didn't want to see that. They wanted to think of Moses only with this uh, amazing Shekinah uh, glow on his face. But Paul says, we have liberty. So no more need for uh, masks. Let me just read uh, uh, some of the verses here at the end of uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 3. 
Um, so Paul is saying that we're different from Moses. We have, we have the fullness of the gospel, the fullness of God's grace. And again, the whole text is important, but let me just read the last uh, three verses of 2 Corinthians 3. Whenever someone turns to the Lord, the mask is taken away. We don't have to pretend. We don't have to cover up the challenges. And, and you know, church ought to be understood as an emergency room. Uh, we ought to be able to come with our needs and, and share needs and be prayed for. Uh, so not to uh, try to hide the fact that we're human and, and uh, each of us faces a huge challenge. Verse 17, for the Lord is the spirit and wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Even your freedom from uh, you know, having to cover up, uh, having a, a problem of any sort, but uh, amazing freedom to be ourselves and to, to uh, seek God's glory and to seek the uh, encouragement and guidance and wisdom from one another too, which is really the point then of the final verse. So all of us who have had um, uh, that veil removed, we can see and reflect the glory of the Lord. And the Lord, who is the Spirit, makes us more and more like him as we are changed into his glorious image from one level of glory to another. Now, we may think of that as visual, as some uh, uh, bright light, but, but Paul is using this not just as a Shekinah glory, but really the glory of the Lord. As, as we share among ourselves, as we have honest questions, honest answers, and, and grow in the Lord, we can uh, be each other's source, along with the Lord himself, who is the ultimate source for glory in any of our lives, but to be a source for each other's growing in those great things that are included in the word glory when we talk about the glory of God. Again, excellence, virtuosity, uh, you know, influence, wisdom, um, greatness, gravitas, uh, the, the wonderful positives that God desires for all of us and that uh, can be delivered in part from one to the other. And notice that Paul says, we then grow from one degree of glory to another. And literally Paul says, we grow from glory to glory. And the implication is really glory to glory to glory to glory and to continue to grow. And, and in prayer and in encouragement, we can do that. Well, let's look at uh, slide eight. And, and here we're, we're looking at uh, what the challenge is, what the problem is. You know, darkness covers the earth. And as we've talked about before, when you think of um, some of the state of uh, politics in our own time, but also ignorance, a lot of uh, uh, ignorance in part based on, you know, terribly biased uh, points of view or lies uh, that we can pick up even uh, from leaders and certainly uh, issues of you know, disease and pandemic. And tragically, we live in a time when persecution is the greatest, is really the, we've hit one of the worst periods of persecution in uh, Christian history. Um, in with so many different countries, a growing list of countries where persecution of Christians is a national policy. It's, it's uh, it could make a person literally deeply discouraged and uh, depressed. A lot of darkness uh, covers the earth. Um, and part of it is, again, the false narratives that, that help, that really contribute to people feeling more depressed and adding to um, levels of anger that are, that are hurtful and where people uh, uh, think that they have to do what they can to destroy the system, uh, believing that somehow the, the whole system is, is corrupt because they've heard and believed some uh, false narratives. You know, a, a, a recent case 
uh, with uh, uh, Louisville, uh, Kentucky. Uh, the uh, story that people have told have, have just skipped the fact that uh, Brianna Taylor's boyfriend that she was uh, apparently living with or at least visiting at that uh, moment uh, was being arrested by the police. But he started shooting at the police. And they shot back to protect their own lives because police ought to be able to go home at the end of the day and uh, be with their uh, spouse and uh, children. So the police shot back. But in, in another room, the bullets went through the wall and, and tragically killed Brianna Taylor, who was not being arrested. But um, it, to then to to drop all that out that they were being shot at by her boyfriend, who was being arrested for being a, a drug dealer, and and the other issues involved, um, make it sound like the police are just evil trying to uh, kill black people, and it's just absolutely not the case. Another classic situation that I keep hearing is uh, Michael Brown from what, four or five years ago, when um, in, I believe it was uh, near St. Louis. And the, the story is that, you know, he said, uh, hands up, uh, don't shoot. But in fact, nobody saw that. When Eric Holder sent a team of uh, lawyers from the, uh, uh, from his uh, you know, team there as, as the Attorney General, the Attorney General's team of lawyers, to interview people, they couldn't find a single person that said that, but instead said there had been a struggle already with uh, Michael Brown trying to uh, grab the uh, policeman's gun away. And, and then uh, Michael Brown was lunging at the policeman um, and he, you know, weighing like twice as much as the policeman. Policeman reacted, probably should have, pulled back and tried to calm down the situation. But nevertheless, uh, it, was, it was a hostile situation where the policeman's own life had already been put at uh, danger. And so Eric Holder's team never did a thing to uh, you know, move toward any indictment of the policeman because uh, they found nothing that could be used. Uh, nothing could be seen as a violation of Michael Brown's civil rights or uh, any uh, criminal behavior on the part of the policeman. And, and I mentioned this to people and even very brilliant people, and they look at me and I said, well, look, just check it out. Uh, what, did, uh, what was the report? What, what happened? And, and the problem is so much of the darkness is created by people that are just trying to sow anger and division and, and are not interested in really uh, reducing uh, racism, but rather trying to upend this uh, amazing uh, system that's uh, eager to improve that we call the uh, American democracy, American Republic. It's a gift from God, needs a lot of improvement, but it doesn't help to tell uh, false stories. So in our own time, we see a lot of thick darkness, especially over people that are uh, probably a little too quickly believing false narratives. And then the narrative, that false narrative dominates how they think. So very important ourselves not to propagate narratives that we're not sure are true and instead uh, rely on primarily uh, narratives of hope and uh, success narratives from the scripture, but also from the extraordinary models of great people like uh, Martin Luther King, who uh, never sought to uh, uh, incite people to violence, looting or arson, uh, or just upending the system, but instead uh, really trusted God to work through uh, amazing communication and uh, uh, patience and prayers or we should probably say prayers, first of all, because his movement was so uh, deeply saturated in prayer and uh, loving uh, and kind uh, approaches, even uh, 
even with the most uh, evil situations. Because the Bible still says, speak the truth in love. It doesn't say speak the truth in love to loving people, but everything else you could just do as you please. Not true. It's those that, that are not loving that uh, need us to speak the truth in love, especially. So here we are in a dark time, darkness, thick darkness. That's so, so vivid. It's not just darkness covering the earth, but thick darkness in the second statement there. The thick darkness is over the people and the peoples, that's plural. So lots of different groups of people. Uh, but let's look at to slide nine. Slide number nine, but the Lord. Now you gotta love that phrase, but the Lord. Whenever you're in a Bible text and those words are there, it's so uplifting, so encouraging that, that uh, something different's happening because the Lord is doing something. Just uh, uh, for exploration, I uh, looked up how many times uh, the Bible has that phrase, but the Lord. You know, this is a terrible situation. We were failing. Uh, there was a lot of, uh, you know, concern and disappointment. But then that word, but the Lord, that phrase, but the Lord shows up 112 times in the Bible. And I took the time to read all of them. Uh, you can, through a computer, you can have those verses isolated and read through. And, and that itself was a huge, I will assure you, a huge inspiration. The um, Daniel, let me just give you a couple of them. In Daniel chapter 9, you have Daniel's prayer of uh, confession. Uh, even though he was not, had a rep reputation of uh, being a great sinner, Daniel uh, nevertheless is confessing on behalf of the people and his own part of being part of the people that rejected God. Uh, Daniel says in uh, chapter 9, verses 8 and 9, Lord, we and our kings, princes, and ancestors are covered with shame because we have sinned against you. But the Lord our God is merciful and forgiving, even though we have rebelled against him. Isn't that great? But the Lord, he is merciful and forgiving, even though we've rebelled against him. Well, I encourage you to uh, type those words in a, a search engine, and, and especially with the New Living Translation, so many uh, references to uh, the Lord, but the Lord uh, changing everything. Joseph uh, was sold as a slave to Potiphar, but the Lord was with him. Joseph was, uh, was resisting a, a terrible plan of Potiphar's wife, and gets thrown into jail because she, she lied about what had happened. And then the next line is, but the Lord was with him. Isn't that a great uh, reminder? Wherever we are, whether it says that or not, we know that it's true. Now verse, now uh, the uh, slide 10. So ethnicities will come to your light. Again, reminder, it's your light. We have the gospel light that other people can see. In fact, the gospel light that's in your life and mine might be the only gospel light people are able to see now because they're not eager to open the scriptures, not eager to seek Jesus, but they can see your light. And ethnicities will come to your light. People of all kinds of backgrounds, a diverse group of people is still watching you. And wherever you are, uh, those uh, people uh, can notice uh, the light. And uh, you know, people are reminded to dress nicely because we're on, every day we walk down a street in uh, New York, we're probably on dozens of security cameras. So you're being uh, uh, take, taking pictures over no matter where you are, however you look. So look nice for the security camera. Well, far more important is that other people are looking at us with their own two eyes and let's pray that they see the light and uh, let us uh, fine tune that ability to show the light. And leaders are, are drawn or will come to the brightness of your dawn. So let, let your dawn happen and uh, let each day be a bright day. And whether it's even uh, now, this time of day, 
we can have a spiritual dawn. Let's look at uh, slide 11. And uh, as a good review, uh, you could uh, go ahead and, and say the words uh, with me as we broke it, broke it down here for the structure of this uh, great poem. So we'll just read the scripture part. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Ethnicities will come to your light, and leaders to the brightness of your dawn. And finally, slide 12. And you could join me in uh, reading this too. Arise, shine, for your light has come. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Great God, we just thank you for this gift, this amazing grace that you have given us light. And, and may, may we allow your light to, to fill us, body, soul, and spirit. Uh, to, to really uh, benefit from that light, that amazing light that you put into us and shine on us. And Lord Jesus, may we be faithful uh, with that light to shine through whatever we think or do or plan to do, that we uh, do it with excellence, with virtuosity, with gravitas, with wisdom, all the things that are built into that amazing word glory and as we do that to also glorify you to increase your reputation as we are uh, uh, being filled up and and expressing your glory in our own lives thank you in the name of jesus we pray amen